Good evening and welcome to Special Assignment. I'm your host, Ashraf Garda. The Limpopo Health Department has recently been making headlines for, among others, shortage of medication, personnel, equipment and poor administration, which are said to have reached alarming levels. Against this backdrop is a general public alarm and discontent at the lack of adequate public health care. Ominously, patients with chronic diseases are the worst affected. In tonight's episode, we focus on the struggles that ordinary members of the public have to go through as a result of these inefficiencies in the province's public health service. This report by Amos Pacho. Long queues, shortage of medicines, broken machines and continuous delays in receiving treatment. These are the day-to-day -day realities that the public has to enjoy in the Limpopo Public Health Service. <laughs> But it seems authorities are not ready to take responsibility. Firstly, it's just lack of money. I want to emphasize the problems here in Limpopo have got nothing to do with lack of money. Behind these inefficiencies are ordinary people whose rights are being violated. What recourse do they have? On August the 2nd, 2011, locksmith Michael Lehodi of Ramasheshani was on his way home back from work when the taxi he was traveling in hit a cow on this busy Matlala road which leaks Polukwane to its western villages. Emergency services officials struggled to free Michael who was the only seriously injured person. He was then rushed to Sishiro Hospital. He says he had to wait for weeks to have his X-ray scans taken on this machine, which has been described as one of the only three technologically advanced in the country. With a population of about 5 million inhabitants in the province, one machine is clearly not adequate to cater for all their needs. Two years after the accident, Michael is still using crutches. He says he became worried when doctors initially told him that the operation which he required might affect his manhood. Another doctor, however, managed to operate on him at Polukwane Hospital following a second assessment, but was referred back to Sishiro Hospital for post-operative care and was shocked to learn that his medical file was missing, which means he couldn't receive physiotherapeutical intervention. They never file yet. About 40 kilometers from Michael's home village is Tembi Mahlangu, who also claimed to have suffered ill treatment as a result of the inefficiencies at Limpopo Public Hospitals. She has been wheelchair bound since 2003 following a car accident. However, Tembi says her improving health condition was compromised while on a return visit to Makwilering Clinic. <laughs> She was allegedly left alone in a room filled with smoke from the leaking gas at this clinic. Despite her fears, her mother says she had to come to her daughter's rescue. Apparently the nursing staff only returned after Johanna had single-handedly rescued her daughter. She says they examined her but failed to detect any harm from the inhalation but now suffers from respiratory complications. Mama, 
Atlanta wa Wuchore, Kitakasagan and Mamma, the following day. We love an Akitomok of Toko. Give up to when an Akitomoti van. I was also a children to let him in Cosentia Wutat. So, how big are challenges facing public health in Limpopo? Answers in a moment. Two years after his accident, Michael Rodi's medical file is still missing. We follow him as he goes on one of his many visits to the Sishiro Hospital to inquire about the file. After inquiring about his missing file, Michael waits for just over an hour before the nurse returns. The file has still not been found and no solutions are offered. Frustrated at the lack of urgency on his case, he approaches the hospital's head of corporate services, hoping to get assistance. Here again, he gets referred back to the administrators. He gets told to still follow the same bureaucratic process, which has so far not helped. None of the administrators gives him assurance about efforts to find his file. Today, he has still not found it. Shortage of medicines is one of the biggest challenges facing the Limpopo Health Department. As the shocking reports of the ailing state of the province's health crisis escalated, concern has also been raised that conditions put the lives of patients with chronic diseases at risk. In the event that the patient don't get medication, what we'll do as doctors, we, we write script, we, we write a letter for them to go to the private pharmacies, you know, to go and buy medication on, the, on, on their own. But what we find is that the patient, after going to the pharmacy, they do not define that the medication is too expensive for them or they cannot afford it, they don't buy it. And the, consequently, when they come next month, we find that the sugars are too high or the, you know, the blood pressure is too high. When you ask the patient, you find that no, they were, not be, they were not able to buy medication, therefore they do not take any medication. And in that way, we are failing to control the patient's disease and we find that the disease progresses too fast in a sense that you know, they end up uh, being too ill because of lack of medication. Tembi's mother confirms this shortage of medication following her recent experience at the Mokopani Hospital. Her daughter relies entirely on medication and cannot afford to buy the required medication for her respiratory condition on a regular basis. <laughs> Doctors believe that the effective management of the province's pharmaceutical depot will go a long way in reducing the ongoing challenge of lack of medical supply. They also pointed to the crippling shortage of equipment. As I speak to you now, um, the machine that is used to screen for uh, breast cancer, it's called mammogram, is not working um, in Bolokwan Hospital 1 as well as in Mangwe. The one in Mangwe has not been working for over five years. In a sense, the whole province has been carried by only one mammogram. This is the machine that screened for the cancer that is the most common second to cervical cancer. I can say it's the second common cancer in women. All these patients, they are lost to the system in a sense that they come we tell them the breast cancer machine is not working there's nothing much we can do to you we can either book you or let you know when the machine is ready when we don't screen them in on time what happens is that they come in advanced stages and at the time where they are too terminal and there's little that we can do from the health point of view in most rural villages in limpopo communities rely mainly on public health due to poor socio-economic conditions <laughs> But in remote villages, a clinic like this one is their only hope. However, in emergency cases, patients have to wait for an ambulance to be dispatched from about 50 kilometers away, and residents say in some cases, ambulances refuse to travel on untarred roads. 
Tembi's mother says she also had first-hand experience of the ineffectiveness of the emergency services. Then, Kamasa, Kanamula, go four o'clock. Kafu naga fu nila EMS. Bampo chare lor. Entre bampo chare lor EMS kicha over kaba trauma serious. Kicha over kana leba trauma lo chiba ba serious. Asya uno bijua fela fela so. Dandi CBC from Mahuelering says he often has to help out the community to transport patients to hospital in his baki due to the slow response time by emergency management services. Mangueng Hospital, which is also a provincial referral hospital, made headlines earlier this year when it was reported that more than 500 people, including newborn babies, lost their lives in less than five months. When you look at shortage of, of, of health professionals on their own, that is significant to make sure, I mean, to increase this uh, maternal, maternal death in the province. On our fact-finding mission, we made crucial discoveries such as that only two of the 23 drawer mushari fridge are working. The laundry machines are not functioning. Some were bought a few years back but have never been used. We also confirmed claims that sometimes linen with blood stains stay uncollected for days. Our source says that this is due to non-payment of the service provider and as a result, sometimes uncollected linen has to be disposed of. We also managed to access a workshop where hospital equipment is supposed to be repaired. This include ventilators which supply oxygen to patients. The natal ICU, which has 22 beds, is said to be having only three of them working. These are pulse oximeters, which help monitor pulse and oxygen concentration in the blood of patients. They also need to be repaired. We discovered many more machines which are awaiting replacement parts. Documents in our position show that most of the hospital equipment is still at this repair center and awaits long overdue payment. The company contracted to perform this work declined to comment on the delays. We also discovered shortage of food staff at Mang Kueng and Sishiro hospitals and broken kitchen equipment specifically at Mang Kueng, compromising the health of many patients, especially those on a strict diet. Coming up next, is there a solution for the ailing public health service in Limpopo? Poor state of affairs at public hospitals prompted the National Health Minister, Dr. Aaron Munzwaledi, to intervene. Munzwaledi ordered an investigation after five newborn babies died at George Masebe Hospital earlier this year after doctors apparently took unauthorized leave. Following reports of the death of over 500 people at Mount Kueng, the minister again intervened after his task team identified lack of leadership as one of the key problems at the facility. And the CEO, Mr. Monale and head of finance, Mr. Kangala, failed to ensure adequate management structure and processes are in place at Mangueng to manage the challenges faced by the institution, to ensure harmonious relationships and consistent communication with stakeholders. This has led, in large measure, to an inability of the institution to deal with many of the factors that are within their control. As part of addressing the problems at Mangueng Hospital, some managers were suspended from their duties. So the immediate thing that should be done today is the immediate suspension of Mr. Kangala, Senior Manager Finance. I've told him this morning that he's going to be suspended. Disciplinary action to be taken against Mr. Mashao. I've met him this morning also. I've already informed him. Progressive step to be instituted against Mr. Masileme. I've also met him. 
Mr. Nkau, I couldn't meet him and because he's off sick. I'll send somebody to inform him. As the minister continues to deal with the ongoing problems in this province, what exactly is needed to fundamentally change the state of public health in Limpopo? Health economics Alex van den Heever says challenges facing the Limpopo Health Department are more systemic. I think that it is dealing with the symptoms at the moment. Quite, it's quite uh, um, appropriate to remove those individuals, I would, uh, I would argue. But I don't think that that solves the long-term uh, systemic problem. And the systemic problem, need, uh, to address it, you'd need to ask the question, how did those people get appointed in the first place and why weren't they removed earlier? So we're waiting until there are media reports and a national minister getting involved before action is taken. But that's only at, when, when things are extremely bad and very, very visible. But in reality, running a hospital, there are things on a day-to-day -day basis which are going wrong, which need to be managed. And a bad manager will be allowing those things to happen on a continuous basis. At the same time, Health MEC Norman Mavaso believes that the problems can be addressed by making more funds available. We've got a problem, um, a, really, a real big problem. Firstly, it's just lack of money. That's the biggest. What would I do if I had money? I would employ doctors. Now, if it's not there, it means I've got a shortage of doctors. What would I do if, if I had money? I would employ nurses. If I don't have it, obviously I won't employ them. What would I do if I had money? I'll buy enough medicines and I'll never run out of stock. The minister, however, rejects this as a defense. There are quite a number of people who believe that problems of Limpopo will be solved by somebody injecting a lot of money in. You are aware that that is not true, I'm sure. Since we brought Section 100 here, we never brought any extra money. We just reorganized. In the past three financial years, the Limpopo Department of Health has been receiving significant increases on its budget allocation. MEC Mawaso also believes that the rural nature of the province has posed a serious challenge in rendering effective public health. An ambulance here, when it goes to, um, uh, to, to I'll give you, Kamagona, Magona is a village, and it's looking for house number 222. The streets have no names. It can rotate and pass the patient until he dies. It's a challenge on its own. Meanwhile, Michael says his missing file has also compromised his level of productivity at work, and he often has to rely on colleagues to execute his responsibilities. Michael's mother says his injury has affected their family's livelihood as he can no longer do additional work to support them. Meanwhile, Tembi has now approached the Human Rights Commission for assistance. She wants the commission to ensure that those responsible for her alleged deteriorating health are held accountable. And then the the commission says it will conduct investigations and make recommendations regarding Tembi's case. 
Its provincial manager says they are dealing with a lot of cases involving the Department of Health in Limpopo. We are having a lot of crises in the health department. Uh, it is unfortunate that we, we sometimes we we have to take some of the complaints at our own, on our on our court. That is where we read article in the newspaper, and then we have to stand up and go to the to the hospital and start with our investigation. For example, if you remember the George Masabe case, we we don't have a complainant in that matter, but we believe that that there may be a, a human rights violation in that matter. We have taken that up upon ourselves. We have requested information, we are investigating the whole matter. In the past three financial years, the department has spent over 56 million rand on litigation settlements. While the MEC says he will look into both cases, it is little comfort to the many ordinary people who rely on public health for their health needs and whose stories never make headline news. Medical lawyer Adele van der Waal says the department is vulnerable to further litigations resulting from the poor public health care service. We really have a, a huge risk pertaining to continuing litigation. We know that accountability is here important. Um, I think the number of cases that's been reported, either whether it's a complaint or we actions are being instituted, are definitely increasing. If the basic needs are not being met, there will definitely be other problems that need to be addressed. That is where negligence can occur, or whether there's misdiagnosis, or where an acknowledged complication can occur, but it's not being treated or addressed timely. But options remain limited for ordinary people. The Human Rights Commission's mandate is limited in terms of how far it can go in making officials accountable. For many of these patients, because they also cannot afford private legal services, in the event where their rights have been violated, they suffer in silence. Now I'd like your comments, and you can do so via Twitter using the hashtag special assignment, or on Facebook, or email. And I'll take your calls on my SAFM radio show, that's on Friday 2.30pm. Finally, last week we brought you a story on the alarming teen suicide rates in South Africa. And this is what you had to say. Ethel Taylor tweeted, These children are troubled by something deeper than academics, socio-economic conditions, sickness, HIV, rape, and no support. And Kenneth Peterson Facebooked, it just highlights the fact that people are achievement-driven. They can't accept failure gracefully, which is part of life. Well, that's it for tonight. Join us again next week when we point out the issues that matter.